Hello OKC Python. My name is Ryan Quinn and I'm going to be giving a, a quick overview of Cython. Uh, what is Cython? It's a Python module so you can do a pip install Cython and it allows you to create Python extensions very easily. It's, it's basically a giant code generator. Uh, you mark up Python code and you run, you compile it and it creates a C file and it creates a shared object and that gets loaded into the Python interpreter. Uh, the, it's a superset of Python based on the Pyrex DSL. It was originally forked from Pyrex, uh, like I think 2007. And, you know, the normal, normal FOSS stuff, people didn't like how things were going, so uh, they created a Cython. Uh, there's a couple alternative methods out there. You can do uh, use a CFFI package, and uh, that that's the C form function interface package out on PyPy. It's it's a little bit different. It requires you to know a little bit more about C code than this one does, so it's a little bit lower level. Uh, there's the C types package, which is in the the base Python install. That's uh, something that you can also use to create to interface with C code, C++ code. And then there's the try and true method of writing an extension in C or C++ from scratch. Uh, that, that might be a little bit cleaner depending on what you're trying to do. Uh, Cython does integrate itself heavily with the Python interpreter. So it does have quite a bit of dependencies. So if you're, think, if you're trying to find something that's super clean, that creates great C code, this is probably not it. Uh, Cython and C, the C Python interpreter are uh, very linked together. Uh, when would Cython be used? And it's going to be used in compute bound applications. It's not going to do a whole lot when you're waiting on a database or other I.O. Like you're doing lots of network stuff. Yeah, it's probably not going to do a whole lot. And um, when you don't want to write C code. Yeah. That was my and that's my impetus for using C, C, uh, Cython originally. Uh, I was trying to speed something up and I didn't want to write a, a C module to do it. Speaking of code, uh, so let's, uh, let's look at some code. Let me switch over here. All right. So uh, let's look at, uh, let's look at this little project. This is the, uh, Advent of Code 2017, uh, day 15. This uh, originally started when uh, Grant Williams in the Pythonista channel uh, asked if anyone had sped up, sped up uh, this particular problem. So this is where kind of where it started. Uh, I did it uh, originally in pure Python, and I think I got down pretty well. I got down pretty quick, but uh, this uh, this was an order of magnitude much much quicker. All right, so uh, let's look what we have here. We have the advent d15.py file, the lib advent d15c.pyx file. That's our Cython file. Uh, the pyx is a legacy from the Pyrex project originally started from. And we've got the uh, you know normal stuff requirements.txt and setup.py. So let's uh, let's look at requirements. That it, it is what it is. Uh, let's look at the setup.py. There's a little bit of setup that we need to do there. Uh, so first thing we have to understand that we're doing is we're setting, we set the name, and then we're setting the external modules. We're saying uh, we're going to siphonize uh, lib advent d 15c.pyx. This is the this is the clue that Cython needs to work. We're gonna look at so let's look at the advent.py file, and it's just basically a general a general Python file. Uh, we're importing the a couple of mon, a couple of uh, functions from the uh, lib advent d15c file, and we're using them down in the loop like we well like we would a normal Python function. So uh, let's look at where all the magic starts happening. The uh, 
the PYX file. <clears throat> so what we have here, we have we have three we have three functions. We have uh, a CDEF. The CDEF is a Cython is a, is a Cython code word, a Cython type. It's saying uh, we're going to return an int. It's saying it's a C def defined C defined function. It's going to return an int, and it's called generator underscore calc. So, and we have a uh, int start int factor. Uh, the biggest difference that we can see so far is that we're we're typing things. If you're used to something that's a language that's strongly typed, this doesn't look very odd. But uh, in Python and other interpreter languages, this is kind of weird. So we have uh, we have returning. We're going to do some math, and we're going to turn there. Uh, we have generator A, generator A, generator B, and uh, judge. Yeah. So we're we're both the generators are calling generator calc, but they're not necessarily doing anything special. So they're much more uh, like a normal Python function. And one of the great things about Cython, aside from being very similar to just regular regular Python, is that you can mix and match them very easily. You can go back and forth fairly with fairly effortlessly. All right, so let's uh, let's build this thing. We're gonna do uh, set up pi. Let me look at my notes real quick. I don't remember what this is off the top of my head because there is a special there's a special way to do this. You have to you have to invoke. Eh, here we go. So you have to invoke. Tell it we're going to compile things. Uh, you do need to have like GCC and the Python development packages installed because you will be looking for like python.h and other source files. So keep that in mind as you're if you want to use this. So I've already got those installed so we're, going to, so we're going to skip that step. So we're going to call Python, we're going to source the set.py file, we're going to tell it build.ext build extensions and we're going to tell it in place. What this will what the in place will do is they'll say it's going to build everything and basically install it in our current directory. And we could leave that, we could leave the in place off and change that to install later. And we could, if you're, if you're using, and you can do, you can install it like system wide or you can install it per the user. But uh, I'm not going to go over that. I'll leave that as an exercise for everyone else. But here we go. All right, as you can see, uh, we've got some uh, GCC output here. Got all the options that we're creating, all the options. We've created the object here. We've uh, linked it right here and compiled it up here. So let's uh, let's look at things now. So remember, we had the pi file, the pyx file, the txt file, and the setup.py file. Now we have a shared object right here that we created that's getting linked into the Python interpreter. And then we have the let's see source code here. And these were both created by uh, Cython and uh, the GCC compiler. If we want to look at the build directory, we can see it's just nothing but the object that we created. All right, but that that's pretty much it. Like uh, Evident Pi runs just like any sort of any normal Python program. I'm going to go ahead and time it and we'll see how long this takes. Yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't put any output on this thing because I was trying to speed it up as much as possible. And uh, it's finally it returns and you can see it took 9.72 seconds. It's a 92% system and a 10 seconds CPU total. All right, so uh, there we go. 
that is uh, that's Cython.